Our next down-to-earth longlister was created to provide an escape from the hustle and bustle of life. And Michelle Agunderhin has traveled to Devon to see it. This is Secular Retreat. It stands like a prehistoric stone structure on the hills. Powerful, but also elegant. It was designed as a holiday home for the public to rent by the celebrated Swiss architect Peter Zumthor. In a large communal space, guests can enjoy open plan living on a single level. There are two wings with five bedrooms and a utility room. You'll have to check about their dog policy. The director of the company who commissioned this upmarket right. mini break spot is Mark Robinson. Wow, so this is it. Yeah. The joy of this building is that it appears very simple. The simplicity here is very much in how it sits on the landscape, how we've interacted with the landscape. There certainly is. Nothing fussy here. A secular retreat is basically made from a single material, concrete. The RIBA admired how, on its high hilltop setting, this building so beautifully hunkers in. The solid materials suggesting that it might be there for generations to come. They were also awed by the lofty open-plan kitchen and living room. I mean, it feels kind of monumental. Like standing inside Stonehenge, surrounded by extraordinary textures. And a floor covered with flagstones of all different shapes and sizes. Each piece was dug from a quarry, the edges neatened, and laid in the shape in which it came out at the architect Peter Zumthor's insistence. The monumental and dark floor seems to root itself to the ground, although the roof apparently floats off the columns, defying gravity. The building stretches itself up and out, providing plenty of opportunity to stretch the mind and escape, say, to the bedroom wing. There could be a party going on out there, but with the thickness of these walls and the door, once you shut it, you could be in your own private cocoon. This house offers many delightfully quiet experiences, whether relaxing in a wooden bath overlooking the exquisite landscape, or sat in peace at a writing desk working on that novel. It was anything but simple to build this contemplative haven, though. The concrete frame wasn't made by pumping and pouring by machine. It was crafted by hand. Not only did the concrete have to be rammed by hand, none of the layers were meant to look the same, as the contractor Simon Cannon soon found out. Secular Retreat is a building that has wowed its visitors, although its design and relative exclusivity have got locals talking. I love this house. It has a lightness and delicacy to it, basically because it's made by hand with an incredible attention to detail. Our next down-to-earth house on the long list is all the better for wearing nothing fancy. This is the Max Fordham house, dressed simply in larch cladding and brick. It's plain speaking, practical architecture at its best. Everything here has a functional purpose. These large strips in the windows prevent overlooking, but allow views out and light in. Inside, everything is pared back and functional, but perfectly suited to the needs of its resident. The efficient owner is the renowned engineer Max Fordham, who has devoted his working life to helping buildings save energy. And buildings that are airtight are energy efficient, which was a key part of the design for both Max and his architect, Justin Beer. Our buildings are taking about 40% of the total energy that is used by the UK, and a large proportion of that is going into houses. Max often makes the point that fossil fuels were laid down 
for four billion years, the rate of one gram a second. We're burning that fossil fuel now at the rate of 5,000 tons per second. That is totally unsustainable. So Max and Justin have built a home that is determined not to use any fossil fuel. A house that doesn't have normal heating, no boiler, no radiators, no underfloor heating, not even a roaring open fire. Port Cullis front door. Just coming! Oh, thanks, Max. <laughs> I, uh... Wow, this is more like it. Inside this cutting-edge home, on the ground floor, there's a large kitchen and living room. On the first floor, there's a master bedroom and guest room. And at the top of the house, a further bedroom and Max's study. The RIBA judges admired how carefully this unpretentious house fitted into the street, hiding its extra upper level by setting it back. Simple, considered and respectful outside, just as pared back and beautiful within. Ah, oh, this is lovely. The judges also commended the thought that had gone into how it would work for its elderly resident, down to the smallest details, like the floor. I, I'm pleased to see cork flooring. Such a welcome change from polished concrete. This is an eco-friendly, super-insulated home that healthily cushions and protects in all kinds of ways to make Max's life as easy as possible as he advances through his 80s. As we get old, it helps that rooms are really well lit. But the glass needed to provide this is the natural enemy of energy efficiency, because windows leak heat. I know how you've railed against heat loss through glass. So this is very light and actually very, very well glazed. Well, obviously, windows are necessary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Justin has used the fewest number of windows possible, while cleverly ensuring rooms are bright and beautifully lit. Although Max would still have preferred slightly less glass. Efficiency drives the aesthetic of this place. Upstairs, Max's office is bright and ordered. The bedrooms are crisply Scandinavian. But Max's greatest triumph over wastage is his invention for the windows. Insulated sliding shutters designed to reduce heat loss. The genius of these shutters is they could be adapted and fitted to existing poorly glazed homes to transform older social housing, listed buildings, all our homes to save energy and the planet. Max's no frills home doesn't just save energy. Its heat exchanger ventilation system also shields its occupants from the pollution outside. The filters are in here. That is all the filthy black particulates from car engines and lorry engines and other things that are filtered out of the air before it arrives in the building. Max Fordham House is a supremely practical piece of architecture one that grapples with pressing problems, solving them for the potential benefit of us all. It's a striking achievement by a remarkable man. It represents a really powerful idea, one man's lifetime of trying to affect change in the built environment, a world of experimentation and a dedication towards low energy, passive house living. Now, we are in an age of incontrovertible climate change. And it seems to me that the beauty of this place is magnified by the fact that its time has come. <laughs>